Today's episode is called, The Barbershop Quartet. Uncle Joe and Sam end their friendship, when Joe concludes that he's the reason his barbershop quartet has no chance of winning a talent contest. Original air date, January 20, 1968. to the junction Forget about your cares It is time to relax at the junction Lots of curves you bet And even more when you get to the junction Petticoat Junction There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction it is run by Kate, come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe, he's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. hear it. A one, a two. Sweet as all right. Somebody goofed. Who is it? Okay, we'll just have to dig out the one responsible. Floyd, you set this one out. <laughs> all right, you ready? A one, a two. Sweet as Ain't you, Floyd. Don't you set this one out. <laughs> okay. Already. A one. A two. Sweet and old. Ain't you, Newt. Sorry, Sam. What do you mean, sorry, Sam? You just ain't cutting it. You made a clinker. Oh, just a doggone minute. How do you know it was me? With a simple process of deduction. It ain't Floyd, it ain't Newt. It's got to be you. Who else is there? There's one more. Who? Oh, come on. I'm the leader. But I ain't leaving till I'm proved guilty. Okay, then you sit one out. <laughs> Ready, man. A one, a two... Sweet and all right. You sure you're singing the right note? You mean everybody's out of step but you, is that it? Well, but I'm the leader. <laughs> hey, I bet I know what it is. This bitch pipe's out of two. That's gotta be. Well, if you guys don't want me around, just say the word. What word would you like to hear, Joe? <laughs> You mean you really say it? Now, Joe, come here a minute. Joe, Joe, a thing like this ain't easy to do, believe me. Hey, huh? You know, uh, but it's the good of the group as opposed to the individual. You know, there's tough competition in this winter festival, Joe. There's Mac and Doris Spock and their musical spoons. They got a large following. And then uh, there's the Winkleman brothers and their guitars. They've added a medley of Latin rhythms, and you know how showy that is. <laughs> and then, of course, there's Bremer Camp's bell ringers. Need I say more? They'd have won last year if they'd have dinged instead of donged on that final note. <laughs> Sir Joe, with competition like this, we got to be at our peak or we might as well fold. That's sort of a defeatist attitude. No, 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 it's face and fact is all. But don't worry, Joe. I'm behind you, your best friend. If you want to stay, I say you stay. If anybody wants to make something of it, let them try. Why, Sam. No, I mean it. You're my friend, and I'm with you, right or wrong. Well, thanks, Sam. But what if I did drop out? Who could they get to replace me? Yeah. yeah that'd be a problem, all right. I'm a guy that's practically irreplaceable. Right. <laughs> so I'll tell you what I'll do. 
I'll drop out. Yes. <laughs> I'll drop out. And if you don't get somebody to fill my shoes, back in, I'll come. Joe, that's real team spirit. Wait till I tell the fellas the good news. I mean, the, the news. <laughs> ben, hear this. Our pal Joe Carson has agreed to step aside so we can get us a good baritone. Or I mean, another baritone. <laughs> of course, I'm saying we'll be able to get one. A good man is hard to find, eh, hey, Joe? You ain't kidding. That's why I'm standing by, so you boys won't be left out on a limb. Let's hear it for a good old Joe. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hey, what are we cheering for? Joe just left the quartet. We're looking for a singer. I'm a singer. Hey, there we are, Sam. Yeah. Oh, come on. Him replace me? That's like putting the bat boy in for Willie Mays. Well, now, we've got to explore every possibility. <clears throat> Barbershop Quartet. Yeah. Well, I decided to give up the quartet. Give it up? But I thought the whole idea for the quartet was yours in the beginning. And you've got a good chance of winning the talent contest for the Winter Festival. I figure I got a better chance from the Magic Act. <laughs> he who travels alone travels fastest. Yeah, last year, it didn't work out so well. You came in last with your Magic Act. Yeah, that stupid rabbit's fault. Oh? I had him hit in my tuxedo. He gnawed through my suspenders. When I grabbed from my pants, the bowl of goldfish fell out of my sleeve. <laughs> it was hysterical. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be. I uh, guess I shouldn't have laughed. I guess you shouldn't have. Uncle Joe. Did you quit the quartet, or did they throw you out? Ah. <laughs> I don't think he quit. <laughs> well, that, that just isn't fair. I'm going to go down to the record store and demand... Don't mention that name within these four walls again. What name? The name of the low-down pole cat that runs a store in Hooterville. Oh, you mean Mr. Drucker. Ah. <laughs> I've never seen Uncle Joe so mad. That's what happens when you have a low-down pole cat for a best friend. <laughs> was right. Jensen standing by to come in. Of all the replacements, old Grandpa Jensen. I mean, you get Fred Ziffel's pig, aren't you? Well, we thought of that. What? The straw hat wouldn't fit him. There's your fish jacket. Your fishing boots. What about my fishing creel? If I get mad enough, I might return that, too. About time you're getting some of this stuff back to me. It's all yours. And now to make the split clean, I like everything back that you borrowed from me. Everything? Yes, everything. <laughs> fish sinker from our last fishing trip. <laughs> and I'd appreciate it if you'd tear up the IOU I gave you for it. <laughs> Uncle Joe? Oh, Uncle 
Cho, Mrs. Todd is here. She wants to see you. Tell her I gotta leave right away. I gotta see Doc Stewart. You're sick? When did this come on? As soon as I heard her call. <laughs> oh, pretty dazzling footwork, huh? Yeah, it's pretty good for an old. Hi, Selma. How do you do? I, um, I would uh, like to talk to you privately. Privately? Yes, in the other room. <laughs> I yell for help, you come around. <laughs> Be safe. <laughs> Miss Carson, I understand that you are no longer with the barbershop quartet. Well, when I heard Andy Williams and Robert Goulet couldn't make it, I dropped out. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, it just so happens, Mr. Carson, that I am chairman of the judging committee for the Winter Festival, and I'd like to have you for a judge. Me? Of course, I'd have to be assured by you that you would be unprejudiced and impartial in your judging. Oh, sure. You gotta be. For example, the um, barbershop quartet. Seeing that Mr. Drucker is a prominent member and uh, seeing that you know Mr. Drucker, I would still trust that you wouldn't show any partiality. Me show favoritism to Sam Drucker? I wouldn't vote for that bum on a bet. <laughs> That's the right approach. No partiality. Here's a list of the acts we'll be judging. Belmont Bremer Camp and his Balkan bell ringers. That Bremer Camp's always a threat, and I understand this year he's added another bell. Keep going, keep going. Ella Mae Crump playing Indian Love Call on a deflating balloon. Remember the last time? No. She had gas in the balloon, and before her number was over, the entire audience was asleep. Go on, go on. Hooterville's own barbershop quartet. Now, you can cross them out right now. They're eliminated. Uh, continue. Henrietta Cloud and her... Thurman. What does she do, ride it around on the stage? That's her instrument. Oh, she makes that lovely, ethereal music. Oh, oh, oh it's out of this world. How come your daughter can even enter the contest? Well, why not? You're head of the judging committee. Beautiful arrangement, isn't it? <laughs> oh, not, not that I would show favoritism. No, of course not. And I wouldn't want you to show any favoritism either, Mr. Carson. In spite of the fact that I'm considering employing the Carson Elliott Enterprises to uh, crop dust my acreage in Cranbell Corner. I guarantee you we'll do a good job. When will you know when you want us to start work? Uh, right after the contest. <laughs> Doodle doo. So long. <laughs> She talked Uncle Joe into being a judge along with her. And I guess you know where that leaves Mr. Drucker in a quartet, considering the way Uncle Joe feels. Well, what do you expect me to do? Not you, Steve. He's his partner, and he should have his interest at heart. Well, you know Steve and I like to stay out of things like this. Did it ever occur to you what might happen? Henrietta Plout could been with her theremin. And have you heard her play that thing? She makes a dentist drill sound good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll think of something. Steve, do you think we're doing the right thing? Oh, I don't see how we can miss if we play our cards right. Number one, you're cooking Sam's favorite meal, corned beef and cabbage. Yeah, and it's Uncle Joe's favorite meal, too. Well, from what I've gathered, every meal is Uncle Joe's favorite. <laughs> right. Hmm? Do you think Mr. Drucker will have any idea that Uncle Joe's going to be here, too? No, not a chance. And I know that Joe doesn't know Sam will be here. It's kind of a sneaky trick, but we had to do something to bring them together. Well, this will do it. Crawling's so ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Steve! Well, that fellow quarrel coming on. Over what? I don't know. I'll think of something. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued at a more convenient time. <laughs> Hi, Sam. Hi, Steve. How are you? Oh, fine, thanks. Here, let me take your coat. Oh, thank you. It's your nice of you kids to invite an old bachelor over for dinner. It's our pleasure, Mr. Drucker. Oh, Betty Jo. <laughs> old home movies. Yeah, we got a few pictures we thought you'd like to see. We'll show them later. Good. Things have sure come a long way. I remember when we used to spend the evening looking at the family album. Hi, Betty Jo. Hi, Joe. Uncle Joe. Hi, Steve. Hi. And it's sure no secret about what we're having for dinner. I can smell that corned beef and cabbage clear. Oh, uh, Mr. Drucker's joining us for dinner, too. Yeah, here, I'll, uh, I'll take that. <laughs> it certainly is brisk this evening, isn't it? 
Oh, yeah, uh, much brisker than, than last evening. <laughs> oh, I, I got it. Let's show the whole movies before dinner. Wonderful idea. Okay. I'll just turn off the light. <laughs> Now, look what we have here. Two old friends at a park. At the party the night before, these two old friends left on their wonderful trip to Topeka. <laughs> right, Uncle Joe? You're right about that going away stuff. But it's for a wonderful time, I never was more miserable my whole life. And that goes for me, too. <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> now, I thought you guys had a good time. Well, we would have had. He tried to steal this widow from me that I met in the lobby of the hotel. <laughs> I stole her from you. You stole her from me. Oh, yeah. I saw her first. You did not. I met her at the gumball machine long before you ever saw her. <laughs> not only that, she was into me for three gumballs. Well, what finally happened? Oh, that was the topper of all time. While he and I are arguing, she runs off with this hayseed from Mason City. I learned later she owned a sleeve holder factory in Dubuque, all free and clear. Well, uh, why don't we just continue the movies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shows two old friends in their large costumes on the most memorable night of their lives. Yeah, this is the night that Uncle Joe vouched for his good friend and buddy Sam Drucker to become a member of the Royal Order of Camels. Right, Sam? Right. And turn that thing off. That's one night I'm trying to forget. <laughs> Sam, turn it off. <laughs> Mr. Drucker, isn't it true that in order to join the lodge, a loyal and trusted friend has to vouch for you? And that friend was Uncle Joe. Yeah, that's right. If he'd just vouched for me and let it go, that would have been okay. But no, he insists on carrying the ceremonial candle. <laughs> what happened? Right in the middle of the ceremony, while we're trudging up the sands of time, he trips and sets fire to the oasis. <laughs> he's so upset I forgot the whole ritual. They put me on probation for six months and took away my hump. <laughs> Let's try it again. And uh, this time, no narration. <laughs> hey, they're rare fishing together on Crystal Lake. <laughs> yeah, that was quite a day. I think we finally hit on a happy one. Yeah, maybe this'll do it. Hey, that was the day of the fishing derby, wasn't it? Didn't you win that one? No, I think you won it, Joe. Hey, I'm wearing my lucky hat with my double dazzler spoon sticking on it. Yeah, that's the one that always hooked the big one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would ever happen to that spoon? <laughs> That's what happened. That's what happened to it. What are you laughing about, you clumsy ox? <laughs> Who are you calling the clumsy ox? You. Because of you, I lost a fishing derby. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You couldn't win a fishing derby fishing in a hatchery. Says me. Says me. When it comes to fishing, the guy on the end of the pole's got to be smarter than what he's trying to hook. <laughs> you out in space. I don't have to take that kind of talk from anybody. Where's my coat? Give me my coat. Here, you skinny little runt. I guess we didn't quite patch things up. Not quite. <laughs> show favoritism. Oh, dear, Mr. Carson, try not to be swayed by our spontaneous enthusiasm for that heavenly inspired number. Oh, really? <laughs> I want the crop dusting to start in the morning. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the final act on this year's Winter Festival, Sam Drucker and his barbershop quartet. I think I'll go and get me a drink of water during the stage wait. You have to hear them out. I'll be fair. Besides, it's a room. <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. 
I'd just like to say that, uh, speaking for the boys and me, this ain't really the Sam Drucker Barbershop Quartet. The name rightly belongs to the man who founded it, worked with it, and then nobly stepped aside. Mr. Joseph Carson. Oh, the stage, unfair. What's the matter, Selma? Matter? This thing has all the appearance of something that was rigged. Oh, I'm appalled. I demand that your vote be thrown out. What about your, you got a daughter that's a contestant? Very well. My vote doesn't count. And your vote doesn't count. The outcome will be determined by the impartial vote of Mr. Quimby. Uh, uh sit, please. The winner is the Barbershop Quartet. <laughs> the Barbershop Quartet! <laughs> well, you told me to vote for somebody else just to make it look good. <laughs> hey, it sure feels good to be friends again, don't it? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I think it was pretty darn nice of Mr. Drucker to make such a gesture. And from the stage, too, in front of everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't you glad you didn't have to vote against him, Uncle Joe? <laughs> Who did you vote for? Oh, what difference does it make? They won. Well, yeah, that's the main thing. <laughs> Sam Drucker's Barbershop Quartet. <laughs> so, sue me. I couldn't spell Henrietta. <laughs> Junction. Junction. 